Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing for you and sharing my thoughts on four fairly popular, I would say, fragrances. One of them was blind, one of them was sort of semi-blind, and the other two were not. And I'm going to let you know my thoughts on them. So if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk a lot about perfumes and I would love if you would consider subscribing. Also, if you're interested in saving money or discount codes or anything like that, do check the description box below because I will have links to all of my favorite places to shop as well as all of my discount codes. You can find that at my link tree and also leave a comment down below if there's any other perfumes you would really like me to review on this channel. I have so much content coming up over the next few months that I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> so definitely make sure to have your notifications turned on as well so that you don't miss any of my uploads. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's perfume haul. Okay, so the first fragrance in today's video is La Perla's Luminous. Now this fragrance I have seen bouncing around social media and I've always been really interested in trying the La Perla fragrances. There's also one called Possibilities, which has gotten really good reviews. The only reason I haven't blind purchase possibilities and tried it is because that one's a little bit more expensive and also a lot of people say that it reminds them a little bit of like a Rouge Malachite kind of thing and I don't know if that would be my cup of tea. That possibilities would be a little bit more risky for me so that's when I don't really want to dish out the money and blind purchase. So this one has notes of Ambrette or Musk Mallow. In the middle you have Jasmine Sambac, Sandalwood, and in the base you have Cedar. And I just want to give you a close-up of this bottle because I think that the this is one of the most beautiful parts about this perfume is the absolutely stunning bottle. I love the cap. I love the bottle design. I think it is so pretty. This is just a very elegant, timeless, classy looking bottle that would be stunning sitting on anybody's perfume tray. And I have worn this perfume so I can tell you kind of how I feel when I wear it and the longevity and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so I've just given it a fresh spray here. And this fragrance is absolutely beautiful, you guys. It is really difficult not to like. I think it's very mass pleasing. So it's just, oh, it's really, really pretty. So it's just a soft, um, kind of a musky, very light, ambery, almost skin-like kind of fragrance when you first spray it. You do get this really beautiful jasmine in there, but the jasmine and the woodiness for me doesn't come through until a little bit later once it's been on your skin for a while. It's just very pleasant, very light, very likable, very elegant and ladylike. It smells exactly as you would expect from La Perla. It smells exactly as you would expect from the bottle. And it's just very timeless and elegant and likable. I think it would be really difficult to dislike this perfume unless you don't like jasmine or you don't like a woody fragrance because it does tend to become quite woody on me in the dry down. And that jasmine really does come through quite a bit and it tends to be a little bit stronger. And I have smelt this somewhere before. Like I've smelt this kind of perfume somewhere before and I'm trying to rack my mind thinking of where have I smelt this. I mean, it's not groundbreaking, it's not mind blowing, but it's very, very pretty and very effortless and soft and likable. I think if you're looking for a gift idea for somebody, this would be a great one to consider because I don't think anybody would not want this gorgeous bottle. And the presentation, the packaging, um, the fact that it is La Perla, and it just sounds beautiful and luxurious. So you guys, people are saying Katy Perry's Indie, Gris Charnel, um, whatever this one is from Mask Milano, Lost Alice. Maybe. Lalique Soleil? I don't get that. No, I don't get that at all. Um, okay, so I don't know what this is reminding me of, but it's not reminding me of any of those. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just very pretty and it smells almost a little bit makeup-y, like makeup compact. I think that's owing to the ambrette that's in there. That is La Perla Luminous. Definitely one to check out if you're looking for something fairly likable and good for kind of anytime, anywhere. Just be a little bit careful if you don't like jasmine, like because this does have quite a strong jasmine component. This is almost like a you but better fragrance, but it does have more of a strong jasmine component. Um, and also the woodiness as well. And this has pretty good performance. I would say this is a moderate to long lasting. At least that was the vibe that, that was the feeling that I got when I wore this. And it really just is a very pleasant everyday ladylike scent. So I won't ramble on it too much more. All right, the next one you guys is one that was not blind. I'd smelled this in store, but 
Unfortunately, the sample or the tester that they had in store smelled like it had gone off, so I didn't get a full representation for this perfume. All I knew in store was that it smelled very pleasant and it got really good reviews. So I did want to try this one at home and I just decided to go ahead and blind purchase it. And I'm, like I said, I'm trying to do that a lot less this year, you guys. This one was one I had ordered back in like January. Going forward, I'm going to be doing a lot fewer blind purchases, but this is one that I thought would be fairly safe. And I also thought if I didn't like it, it would be pretty easy to find somebody to take it off my hands because I think it is a pretty well-liked fragrance. And this is from Armani Privé and this is Tay Yulong. So this is a citrusy tea fragrance. So the notes that you have in here are mandarin orange, petty grain, and cardamom. I love cardamom. So I was kind of hoping I would get a lot of cardamom in this fragrance as well. There's also green tea, black tea, jasmine, and orange blossom. So you do have a little bit of a white floral component, which I was really happy to see. And you also have vetiver, ambrette, or musk mallow, and iris. So I really love musk mallow or ambrette, and I also like iris. Those two fragrances or those two notes tend to lean themselves to being very comforting, a little bit powdery, and like a you but better type of scent. All right, so I just gave it a spray on the paper. Okay. So this is a really beautiful fragrance. When I first spray it, I do get a lot of a citrusy touch, which is interesting because there's not much for citruses noted in here. There's orange, and then overwhelmingly there is tea. But for me, for some reason, this comes across very, very citrusy, which is not my preference. Almost a little spicy. Yeah, lots of orange. I'm getting lots of mandarin orange in the opening. So for me, this is mostly a citrus tea fragrance. I don't get a ton of the florals that are in there. I don't get a ton of the powdery iris that's in here. I have worn this on skin, and honestly, you guys, I just don't think this is my cup of tea. I just, <laughs> no pun intended. I don't think that this is my type of fragrance because I don't know. I don't know. I just think that perhaps that orange and... A little bit of a spiciness that I'm getting in here. It just isn't doing it for me. I kind of wish it was more about the cardamom, the jasmine, um, and like maybe the iris, but then it would be obviously a completely different fragrance. Like for me, this is very fresh and airy. This would be great for the summertime, especially on really warm days when you just want something very clean and very light and very fresh. Um, that's great for hot weather, humid weather. You don't want something too heavy. Honestly, for me, you guys, my vibe is more the Santel Dancha from Armani Privé. If we're going to stick with Armani Privé, that is more me. That one is sort of like a fresh take on a sandalwood. This just isn't my favorite scent profile. I just, I don't like a lot of citruses and it's just a little too fresh for me. I know that sounds strange, but it's just a little, it's just a little too fresh for me. I just don't like it personally myself. It's not the type of perfume I would normally go for. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth keeping it and trying it later on once the weather gets warmer. Um, yeah, I really don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, it does smell really pretty, but I just don't think that it's my type of fragrance. If we're talking fresh fragrances for the summertime, I much prefer something like Chanel Chanso Tendre or Gabrielle Essence. Um, what else do I have that's fresh? Not very many because I'm just not much of a super fresh person, but I just tend to go for more of those florals, a little bit more of the fruity floral. So it's a beautiful scent, but I just don't think it's for me. So yeah, that is Tay Yu Long. I do think it's beautiful. And from an objective point of view, I can see why it's very likable. And if you like tea perfumes, if you like something light, if you like something fresh, this is definitely one to check out. I will be doing a compare and contrast between this one and um, the Oolong Sha from Nishane, which is also a tea fragrance. And I have a sample of that one that I'm gonna have to play with a little bit. I don't know, like, I mean, it does smell it does smell really nice and it does tend to get a little bit more powdery and soft on the skin, but I just think that in general, maybe I'm just not a tea person. I also don't like any of the Elizabeth Arden tea fragrances, maybe with the exception of the white tea. That one was a little bit more, I think, vanillic and powdery, but I didn't care for the green tea or any of the like citrusy um, tea fragrances from Elizabeth Arden. So 
I just think that this scent profile in general for me is just not right for me, so. All right guys, so now we have a fragrance that I'm actually a little bit on the fence about. This is from Initio and this is Absolute Aphrodisiac. So this is a vanilla fragrance, but it's also a leather fragrance and it's a little bit animalic. And this was not a blind purchase. I had smelled this before. I had a sample a few years ago, um, but I have long since lost that sample. I don't know where it ended up. And all I remember was that this was a sexy perfume, but I didn't really know if I loved it. But I will be honest, I was sort of um, became victim to the hype of this perfume and the fact that it gets such good reviews. And I was kind of looking into it a little bit more, reading reviews, looking at Fragrantica, seeing what people had to say. And the response to this perfume was overwhelmingly good. And I thought, you know what, what the heck, let's just get it. Um, my tastes have been changing. Perhaps I will be absolutely crazy about this one. So I did order this one blindly-ish, sort of, but not really. And I will tell you guys, as it sits right now, I'm kind of on the fence about it. So this has notes of vanilla, amber, castorium, leather, musk, and white flowers. So this is a predominantly vanilla perfume, super sexy, does have a bit of an animalic touch to it. And that animalic touch is owing to both the leather and the castorium that's in here. So I don't know what castorium smells like by itself. All I know is that it supposedly comes from like the glands of a beaver apparently and apparently there's just like this seductive sexy animalic touch that castorium brings to fragrances when i spray this on paper i get a lot of that animalic scent coming through on paper almost to the point that it pretty much puts me off so on paper i did not I was not impressed. I didn't love it. When you put it on your skin though, the animalicness does tend to subside a little bit. That castorium becomes much softer and it does become more about a sexy sort of a suede vanilla fragrance. There is also a touch of white flowers in here as indicated on the notes, but I really don't get much for white flowers in here at all, if any. Um, I guess it's just there sort of as a supporting note to round it out a little bit and make it not just so straight up about, you know, less simple, I guess, a little bit more complex with the white flowers. But overall, this is a fairly simple fragrance. It's also quite linear. Like I said, that first opening, a little bit more animalic, then it starts to mellow out and becomes more about vanilla. So I do have it on paper here. All right. Okay, so the thing about this perfume is that it's kind of addictive. Like, it smells so unique. It's a very unique vanilla. I've never smelled anything quite like it. I think because, yes, it's a vanilla leather fragrance, but you do have this slightly dirty touch to it. It's a bit dirty. Yeah, it's, it's a bit dirty. You know, it's a bit animalic and musky. And that's why it's so sexy. There's something about it that's super, super attractive. And once you get it on your skin, it's even more so like that. It's just... It just smells even more enticing. But I'm obviously not jumping out of my chair for it. Like I'm not like, oh my gosh, you guys, this is so great. I love this so much. Like I'm not like head over heels for it. It is good, but I don't know if I love it. In comparison to another vanilla that I recently got my hands on, which is Baby Cat from Yves Saint Laurent. You guys, Baby Cat is also a leathery vanilla fragrance, much less animalic than this one, but for so they don't smell the same. But just to compare it to another vanilla, Baby Cat like blew my mind. Like I'm obsessed with Baby Cat. I like Baby Cat so much that this is like nothing to me compared to <laughs> compared to Baby Cat. That's how much I love it. I guess what I'm saying is I don't want to have this perfume just because I'm trying to make myself like it, you know? And I feel like I'm kind of almost trying to make myself like it. I don't know. It's, I just think that even though it smells good and it does have a sexiness to it, I just don't know if I can get past that animalicness about it. I really don't know if I can. Um, and not that it smells bad. I just, I don't want to try to force myself to like a perfume. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one. So I think it's, I think it's good enough that I could keep it. Like it's fine. I could keep it, but I really just don't know if it's me, you know, whereas, um, something like Luby Prince, Baby Cat, Ombre Magique, um, some of these other vanilla perfumes are just so much more me. This one, I don't know if it's me. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay, but sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. So I'm very much on the fence with Absolute Aphrodisiac, so I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I will have to play with it a little bit longer. I have worn it, and I have experienced it on my skin, 
and I'm still sort of on the fence. So if you guys have tried Absolute Aphrodisiac, let me know how you feel about it. I don't think it's a safe blind buy by any means, but it is one of the vanillas that gets the most hype out there. And in terms of Initio, I feel like there's other fragrances that just speak to me so much more, like Oud for Greatness, I think is absolutely fantastic. And I love the scent profile of that one, and it just makes me feel very opulent and very sexy and very bold and I just really really like Oud for Greatness. This one for me sort of is like it's almost an amazing vanilla that I just love but it's almost kind of turning me off a little bit too so I just don't know how I feel about this one. Okay guys and the last fragrance in today's video is from the house of Maze and Sear and this is a house created by Alberto Morias which is a master perfumer and he is behind some of the most incredible fragrances in the world including uh, my boyfriend's favorite which is Aqua de Gio and um, I actually showed this perfume to my boyfriend the other night and I told him I said the guy who created this is the same guy who created your favorite cologne of all time so that kind of piqued his interest and I think maybe he's going to start to become a little bit more interested in niche which would be really cool if he did that because currently I have no one to talk to about my obsession except for like my YouTube and Instagram friends because nobody gets it anyways so this is from Maze and Sear and I have to say Maze and Sear you guys is one of the most amazing houses. So many of their creations are just beautiful. In fact, they're all beautiful. It just comes down to a matter of what you like. I will say that I've had For Your Love. For Your Love was just not for me. It just was not my kind of perfume. Um, also, Trey Cher, loved Trey Cher. That is just an incredible fragrance, you guys, but unfortunately, I found Trey Cher to be a little headachey for me. It was very strong, and it just wasn't one that I enjoyed wearing once I finally did wear it. Luxury is really beautiful and it smells very much like clean, crisp, powdery, expensive linens, sort of. It's a beautiful, powdery fragrance, a really nice kind of an iris scent. Ombre Magique is one of my most recent discoveries and I'm obsessed. I, I'm just absolutely mind blown and obsessed with Ombre Magique and I do have a full bottle of that one. And this one, you guys, is also no exception to the brilliance of the house of Maison Cyr. This is perfect. Oud. So again, a scent profile that I did not think I would ever have in my collection because up until this year, I didn't think I could wear Oud. And I I liked the smell of Oud, but I didn't think I could ever wear it for myself. I felt like it was too masculine, uh, just not for me, something I wouldn't enjoy. But I do recall that when I had a sample of Perfect Oud, I remember thinking to myself that it was one of the most beautiful oud fragrances I'd ever smelled in my life. So the notes that you have in Perfect Oud are Bulgarian Rose, Bergamot, and Coriander, and in the middle you have Agarwitter Oud and Iris, and in the base you have Cedar and Juniper. So let me go ahead and give this one a spray. All right, so I just put way too much on the paper, and I don't even know if I needed to spray it because it's quite potent at the bottle. So what I will say about Perfect Oud, you guys, this is so smooth and so palatable and so unisex and so beautifully blended and soft and elegant that anybody could wear this even if you don't like oud even i mean you have to like oud but even if you're not a huge oud person or you feel like oud is difficult for you this is still one that you could probably wear and would be quite easy for you to wear so i'm still waiting for it to dry down on the paper here but Oh, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. This is the most feminine powdery take on an oud that I've ever smelled so far. It's not super strong or heady. It's not super headache inducing. It's not as beast mode as something like oud for greatness. There's a lot of iris in here. Iris is one of the notes that I pick up on the most and that gives this perfume more of a powdery almost a powdery like makeup compact lipsticky touch to it. It's sort of like, imagine something like lipstick on from Maison Margiela, if you've ever smelled that, that waxy, almost lipsticky powdery fragrance, and then pair it with some super smooth, non-animalic oud. That's what this is to me. Oh my gosh, it's just beautiful, stunning. It's almost giving me a little bit Valentino Donna vibes as well. If you've ever smelled Valentino Donna, that one is like a powdery vanilla leather, very elegant, very beautiful, very soft, inoffensive, classy. That's kind of the vibes this is giving as well. Not that they smell the same, but they have touches. I feel like Valentino Donna could be like the sister of Perfect Oud. So this is a unisex scent, but definitely can go either way. I think this is great for a man. 
In fact, it's almost too smooth for a man. It's almost too powdery. There's also rose in here. There's a tiny touch of a spiciness from the coriander when you first spray it. And you also have a little bit of this like woodiness. You've got some juniper, which juniper usually lends itself to smelling a little bit more masculine. You find juniper in a lot of male targeted fragrances, but I'm not getting it super, super strong in here. It's just very nicely blended. It's incredibly smooth. It's so pretty. It's soft. It's powdery. It's elegant. It's just really beautiful. This is like the soft powdery nighttime version of an oud for women i feel like and i also think this would be a great layering fragrance it's just it just has enough oud in there to give it this like touch of class and this touch of something super sophisticated but it's not like an overpowering overtaking kind of kind of oud this is the type of fragrance you could wear at the office during the day, even as like a layering fragrance with some of your other scents. It's very classy. It's very elegant. It's not what I would consider a sexy perfume, like sexy nighttime. It is, it is very, I mean, it could be a little bit sexy, but it's not what I would choose for a sexy night out kind of thing. I feel like this is more of a wearable fragrance and it truly is one of the nicest ouds I've ever smelled in my life. Not like as, not as beast mode and wow factor and it doesn't do to me the same thing that Oud for Greatness does for me. This one's a little bit more like office friendly and smooth. It's just ultimate, ultimate class and really quite palatable and quite easy for somebody, even if you're new to Oud, even if you don't know if you like Oud, if, if you want to kind of broaden your horizons a little bit and just check something out, just give this one a smell and see what you think, because it really does pull quite powdery and quite soft and quite feminine in a lot of ways, but also still great for a man. Yeah, it's um, just a beautiful, beautiful scent. And I'm hoping that I get lots of wear out of it because it's not my typical scent profile. Um, I'm gonna try layering it as well with some other fragrances and just see how it goes. I wonder if it wouldn't be nice layered with some sort of a sweeter fragrance or maybe a vanillic type of fragrance, but this is truly a masterpiece in and of itself. Um, it's just beautiful. So we'll see how the wearing of this one goes, but this is definitely one of the nicest ouds I've ever smelled in my life. Um, I'm not much about the whole rose oud combination. I'm not much about oud for sat oud satin mood. Um, oud bouquet, shagoff oud, those are not my type of ouds, you guys. I'm actually so tired of the rose oud combo. Like I just, I can't do it. I don't like it. I don't want it. Um, the caramel rose oud thing, not, not my cup of tea, but I do really like more of a saffron, a spicy, a warm, a powdery, um, an airy kind of an oud. And that's what this is. I do want to say as well, you guys, people on Fragranzica are comparing this to ombre leather, or some people said it reminds them of ombre leather from Tom Ford. My boyfriend actually wears ombre leather. It's one of his signature scents. And I will say that this smells quite different from ombre leather. So if you've smelled ombre leather and you don't like it or you're not a fan of like leathery scents. Um, ombre leather is much, much more about leather. This is not as leathery. It does have a powderiness to it and kind of a skin-like quality to it. So I can see why they would make that comparison, but honestly, ombre leather is quite different. And I have to say, I really, really like ombre leather, but I like that one more for a man. That one is a little too masculine for me. I wouldn't want to wear it as a woman. This one though, I think is much more feminine. So just so that you know, and I don't think you should blind buy this. It's expensive. It's also kind of hard to find. I had to order this from Lucky Scent because it was literally sold out everywhere else. Um, so I did order this one from Lucky Scent along with a bunch of other samples, which I'll be sharing with you in the future. So it is kind of hard to get. It's a little bit pricey, but it is a true masterpiece. It's so beautiful and so smooth and very likable. All right, you guys. So that was today's haul. And just to give you a quick recap of kind of how I feel about these perfumes, honestly, the only one that kind of is a true winner for me, like right off the hop is the Perfect Oud. That one, I just think, I just love the way it smells. I think it smells so beautiful. Um, La Perla, I do really like, but I don't know if that Jasmine... I don't know if it's the right fragrance for me, but I think it's beautiful. But I, I don't know if it's my perfect type of floral. Like I said, I tend to go a little bit more for those pink florals and um, less toward the jasmine dominant, with the exception of Mugler's Alien. For some reason, I really like the jasmine in Alien. Um, 
So that is La Perla Luminous. Tay Yu Long, I'm sort of neutral on, except I just don't think I am a tea citrus kind of gal. Just don't think that works for me. And then Absolute Aphrodisiac, like I said, I'm just sort of not sure how I feel about the animalic nature. And I think it's really nice, but kind of on the fence about that one. So the only true, like, standout winner to me in today's video is Maze and Sears um, Perfect Oud. I think that's stunning. And yeah, that's it for today's perfume haul, you guys. So that was it for today's perfume haul and sort of semi-review video. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these fragrances and I look forward to seeing you all very soon in my next one.